Edinburgh just close on the Irish Champions Festival. How, how much do you look forward to the weekend? Oh, very much so. Like, obviously, look forward to it all year, I suppose. Um, it's massive. It's changed the face of Irish racing totally uh, for everybody all over the world. Um, it probably has the best slot of any race meeting in the world. It's uh, just right at the end, at the edge of the autumn, where the ground is usually just not turned, and that uh, you have all the good horses there to compete in championship races. Um, the ratings of these races stand mm. uh, against any race in the world ever, always, as, as we know. Um, but it, it's incredible, uh, very lucky. The two unbelievable tracks, two great facilities. Um, something really to look forward to. And it's the quality of the racing, as you were saying earlier on, that's what attracts the people. Absolutely, like it's, it's the reality of it is the prize money attracts the big horses, and the big horses attract the people. And that's just the way it is all over the world. Um, and uh, the right races are on at the right time, where they can all mix and come together. Uh, I would imagine for anyone doing international classifications, it's probably the most important meeting. Uh, is champion stakes where the older horses meet because in Ascot the ground can be gone too heavy sometimes in the arc the ground can be gone so mm. uh, the three-year-olds usually meet the good older horses in, in the champion stakes so I would imagine uh, it's probably the most important race of all yeah and from your own perspective is it a is it a meeting that you target from a fair way out like there are, there are races as well as the Irish champion stakes there are races for all the different disciplines oh absolutely listen obviously the Migler for the fillies the uh, champion stakes for the older horses, the national stakes for the colts. Um, you ha now you have the boomerang mile, and uh, you have all those races. Uh, you have the ledger, um, you have the sprint. Um, I, I think for so many, for all, it caters for them all, really. The Irish champion stakes itself, it's a race that you've won more often than any other trainer. You've won it 11 times, including the last four. Are there any of those that stand out for you? Like you won it for the first time with Giants Causeway in 2000. Yeah, sure. he was a very special one, obviously. It's a very difficult race to win. Um, like from the time Galileo got beat in it. So it'll just tell you how tough it is to win it. Um, we try and win it every year. Um, like we've been lucky to win it sometimes, but it's, it's a very tough race. Um, usually the good horses from all over the world come and that's very important for us. Um, but it is tough, uh, competitive and uh, incredible race to win really. Uh, and there have been some uh, epic races that you've been involved in like Dylan Thomas and Ouija board was brilliant. Then the one, two, threes that you've had along the way as well. Like yeah. there must be milestones in your career. Yeah, sure. There's so many of them obviously like a minding, Giants Causeway, like you said, High Chaparral, all those horses back along uh, St. Mark's Basilica. Uh, you know, serious horses, um, serious races they don't always be big fields but mm. when there's a small field that usually means it's more competitive yeah. and this year you've got August Rodin and Luxembourg they're both on track for the race both on track at the moment uh, Luxembourg came out of Vasco very well and uh, Augustus has been well too um, obviously it was a blip with him in, in Ascot and uh, he didn't really take part from halfway he came out of the race and uh, Ryan felt that things weren't right and took him out which was definitely not the wrong thing um, because there was no damage mental or physical done um, and uh, we're looking forward to him. He's, he's really well, he's really fresh at the moment. Uh, his work is very good. Um, yeah, we're really looking forward to him. Of course, he's a dual derby winner, obviously. And we just saw him this morning. He looked in great form. Oh, he's um, unbelievable. He's, he's, uh, he's like a bomb ready to explode at the moment. Like when you see a horse rolling, the way he rolls, he flips both sides without even batting an eyelid. Um, uh, Rachel rides him every day and in his work and very happy. Andrew's in charge him, de delighted with him. Um, so uh, Davies delighted with him, looks after him. So um, yeah, no, he's uh, we're looking forward to him. Uh, and do you think the drop back down to 10 furlongs that would be okay? Uh, for I don't him? think it'd be a problem. Yeah, yeah he's he's low to class, a lot of speed, great traveller. Uh, as long as the ground wouldn't be bad, we could show his class. But w in an ideal dream world, we would love lovely good ground, good strong pace on and the best horses around to take part and then we'd all get a look and see. Was Luxembourg won it last year, how has he been? Good, he's very well, he's very well. His, his work has really came forward. Uh, we sent him forward in the King George to make it a very tough race and obviously Bolshoi, they were all forward, Port Lonsdale. Um, so it might have been a little bit too uh, force, we rode him maybe a bit, little bit too forceful um, over a mile and a half. Like we know that he has mile and a quarter class and we kind of rode him into King George like he was a mile and six horse, which he's not. Uh, he's kind of mile and a quarter horse that gets a mile and a half. So we might have rode him a bit forward and went a little bit early on him, but um, listen, looking forward to him back to a mile and a quarter. Yeah, back to the defender's crown. Absolutely. Um, the Kulmar America justify matron stakes you've got meditate for that yeah she's very well she's put on 20 kilos since uh, her last run um, might have all happened a little bit early for her and we backed her up a few times but mightn't have 
suit her. She mightn't have been fully mature when you see that she's that much heavier now. So there is a chance that she could come right back to her best, um, hope, hopefully. Uh, she's in very good form. Brett rides her every day. He's riding her in his work and Jamie's in charge of her and they're all very happy with her. Yeah, good. The the two-year-old races then at the Curragh on the Sunday, like they're really important races to you again. Both Group 1 two-year-old races you've won multiple times. City of Troy, he looked very good the last time. Yeah, he looks so something very different. Uh, his last run was in Newmarket, so he's had a good break. And the plan was he won a Group 2 there, was to come straight to the national stakes. He's a very unusual horse. Um, when he starts, when he passes the furlong and a half, he starts rolling and he starts extending. and. He gets into just this different rhythm, which is very unusual. Um, obviously, gets seven real strong. Uh, he'll get a mile on his ear, you'd imagine. So, looking forward to him. Hopefully, um, Adrian's horse this think might come. Like that would be very exciting for us all to see. Mm. And like uh, our horse will go forward if someone's leading great. If not, he'll go himself. And I'd imagine Adrian's horse will be following him, and it'll be whoever will crack first. Then you yeah. know. So, and obviously, there's other horses there too that have chances. And hopefully, they'll all turn up and. Uh, it'll be a good race. Mm. Henry Longfellow, he's got an entry in the race as well. He, he like has, yeah, out? he's in it as well, but he's, it's possible that he could go to the Jew horse. It'll depend on what the lads want to do, uh, really, and they'll make that decision late. Whether they'll run the two against each other, probably not, but uh, they'll decide. Yeah. In the Phillies race on the Moidler, you've got Ylang Ylang. She looked really good in the Silver yeah, Flash. Yeah, very happy with her. Um, she won her maiden very nice and then went back to the Silver Flash. And and we had a choice runner on the way to Cora, give her a little bit of time, and that's what we did. And we think it was the right thing. Uh, Dean rides her every day and rides her in her work, and uh, a key's in charge of her. So they're all very happy. She's done very well physically. Uh, we're looking forward to her. Uh, if she gets a lead, all the better. If not, she'll have to go herself. But ideally, you'd like her to get a lead, but we're very happy with where she's at the moment. Yeah, and, and the form is working out really well. Will McCurry is Philly came out and won the debutants. No, absolutely, yeah. I remember saying it to Willie after the race, she, she was coming at her in, in Leperstown and we might have got first run on her because we were up front. Um, so it will be interesting to see, but Willie's filly was coming home very well that day. And I don't know what the distance was in the end, but I remember she, like she caught everybody's eye that day and, mm. and you saw what she did at the car then. Yeah. Um, then in the Flying Five, Aesop's Fables, is he a positive? Yes, pop, yeah, pop yeah, that's the plan. He, he had a long break and he had to run somewhere and the Nuntorp was the only place he could run. So he went over and ran, but we knew he would get tired. Uh, Ryan sent him forward to have him ready for the Curra and uh, to sharpen him up. Um, he got tired like we thought he would. So if he comes out of that, okay, we think we'll see a different horse the next day. Yeah, good. And Kiprios, we haven't seen him since last season. No, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah he's great. Yeah. Um, like three, four months ago, I just said to you, we'll never see him again. But he's making great progress. He was at the Curragh two weeks ago. Um, he's getting ready to run. Uh, it looks like the only place we might be able to start him is the ledger. Um, being realistically, could he be ready enough to win it? Probably not. You, can see that you can't go in and win a big championship race like that without having a run. And like, if you only knew what he had to go through to get back to where he was. But if he got back and ran and ran a nice respectable race, then we could go on to Arc Weekend or somewhere like that. But yeah. it would be just exciting to get him back and get him going. And if we got them few runs into him this year, we could look forward to next year with him. But uh, very happy at the moment. Uh, Patrick is in, rides him out every day. Uh, Rachel rides him work. Uh, uh, Derek is in charge of him with Donald. So uh, they're very happy. So uh, Fazzy looks after him. So everything so far is going good with him. Because for him, like the, the talent that he has, it must have been frustrating t for the season to not have him here. Ah, yeah, listen, we thought that he was our obviously nailed on Gold Cup horse. Mm. And listen, it just went wrong. Then it looked like he wouldn't ever race again. And at one stage, it looked like whether he'd even live, you know. So that'll tell you where the horses mm. came from. Like he got an infection in his joint and it got inside in his joint and it just made everything very unstable. So, but it all came back and Eamon did a great, incredible job with him to get him back, really. Um, and uh, he spent day and night with him um, and obviously Ger and John and Shane and uh, but like Eamon spent all the time with him really he he, he did an incredible job on him uh, Patrick's riding him out really looking after him now and you know so like I say Rachel is riding him work and uh, no it, listen it would be exciting to get him back and um, just on, on the weekend Aidan it's Whirlpool Day the, and the Whirlpool moment of the day for stable staff that's important isn't it? Oh vital and it, listen we always say you can have the place you can have the horses but you don't have the people it won't happen and um, they're the people that put in all the hard work day in day out they're the personalities that the horses connect to and uh, we always believe a, a horse to become good has to develop a personality and that's they get the personality from the person that's looking after them and it's a very unusual thing if you leave somebody with a horse for six weeks the horse will develop the personality of the person and it's like night follies day that happens so that'll just tell you how important those people are and they put in the work day in day out, day out and it's love to do it for and uh, 
um, and obviously uh, they're very important and have to be looked after as well as possibly can be because they're the people that are so important to us all. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.